From the unknown to the stars, from the couch to the car, from the unheralded and the unheard, to the legends and beyond, it's where we all belong. Yes, this is where it all starts. From every genre, from every plane, this is where the music's played. So tune right in, what you bring? This is where it all begins. Welcome to the show. Let the music flow of every style and creed. And you can bet your socks that ETX rocks. ETX rocks. Hey guys, Boston Chris here with the number one resource for independent music in Northeast Texas. It's the ETX Rock Show, and it's episode number 318 coming at you right from Longview, Texas. And we're featuring an East Texas kid born and raised, That's Russell me, Boyd. Friend. That's right. Coming back home a little bit. I did. We're, I'm about, uh, I guess I'm about four hours from where I live. Again, I'm representing Round Rock today. Mm-hmm. It's Round Rock Express. Live right behind there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's about four hours from here, man. But as you were saying, I was raised more around here. I, I was in Palestine earlier today to interview. That's where my parents live. And I about, at first I was going to come home from here, and I'm like, man, it's four hours away. I'll stay. So I'm staying at my mom's house tonight. Hell yeah, that's what I would do. I mean, yeah. Palestine's only like 90 minutes. And yeah, that's, an that's al- like almost that. halfway home. Yeah, not quite, yeah. Like, well, two less. hours, I guess. I used to date a girl from Palestine, so I, I spent a lot of time in Palestine. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, Palestine's, I love the people down there at the radio station down there, too, because a lot of times when folks go there, they come here, too, and that's good for us. Uh, so, and yeah, you know, it's funny. I actually worked in radio when I was a teenager in Palestine. Really? Yeah. When KLIS Same radio station? Stuff. No, uh, I was at KLIS. Uh, what was it? Uh, 96.7. Yeah. And uh, but I, the the guy that interviewed me today, uh, we hadn't met back then, but we knew some of the same people. Right. You know, it was pretty cool. Like you say, man, coming home is. Yeah. We've got to make some connections, you know. So, I mean, you, you're living in, what, Pflugerville now, right? It's Round Rock. I did live in Pflugerville for uh, several years. Okay. But uh, I, I got to say, man, I love Round Rock. I mean, it's real chill, laid back. It's not like real. Uh, uh, it's, it's it's constantly ranked one of the best places in the United States. Actually, I've so only that. been there once, and it was just driving through to go to Austin. I, I really like it. I mean, yeah. everybody's really, it's, it it's, it's nice without being for, snooty, uh, you know, it's chill without being like there's real low crime rate all that kind of thing yeah and you're close to austin too so you get the... yeah but uh probably took me a half an hour by the time i got downtown but okay you play a lot in austin no uh austin is one of the worst places to play although that's changing i think and we're talking financial right because it's pretty much uh there for a while let's say eight ten years ago i mean it was uh, there's kind of this uh hipster vibe that built up there everybody's trying to be cool and stuff mm-hmm. you could feel people if you're playing live music people would walk in and be like oh, live music and they go out on the patio they didn't say that but you're reading their minds wow. you know? that's uh, obviously live music capital of the world it did not start out that way it used right. to be really good. Uh, it's getting a lot better now I haven't been playing in Austin but I just you know I joined a Facebook group uh, with some people who were excited about Austin music that they started it I joined the uh, Austin songwriters group I mean there's stuff going on there again yeah, it's it's a thing. I don't know how a couple of the music venues have closed down. I mean, it's still not what it was in the whatever '90s before my time, but uh, it's it's getting to be a, a cool place. You and see, I would say the surrounding areas have got uh, Round Rock has a couple of places you can play now. Yeah, I mean, you know? see, the one time I was there, it was quite an experience. I'd never seen anything like it before. You know, we were out on Sixth, just watching the street performers, and every single bar along there had live music. This was a Tuesday night. I was like, holy crap, this is how, awesome. how long ago was that? Ooh, two summers ago. Well, that's good. Then it's already it's already coming back. Cause I, I mean I don't hardly go to Austin anymore very often. Yeah, we went out there because uh, my nephew was invited for a private audition for I think it was America's Got Talent. And, American Idol. Huh? American Idol. No, it was AGT. I'm was pretty it sure. AGT that time. I think it was. I know we've done both. Because so. Katie was involved in that. That's right. So I think it was AGT. But anyway, we went out there with him and did some street performing, which was fun. Just a whole different vibe out there, I think, than anywhere else I've been in Texas. Uh, but this is Russell's first time on the show. Thank you, Dylan Steen, for sending him our way. Uh, Dylan's a good friend of ours, and, man, I love all of his artists. Uh, but you're going to play some music for us. Uh, tell us a little bit about the first song. Which one are you want, wanting to put first on, on the episode? Uh, let's start with the, the current single. Okay. 
Just wash it all away. Let's wash it all away. Yeah. This is the one where you were trying to be a little less. Trying to be weird. normal. <laughs> yeah. It's my. So tell my us what that means to you. Trying to be normal. Well, uh, so the Texas scene, as we were just saying, is it's gotten so much better. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really, really cool. The op what I was just saying about people walking in and see it for, there for a while in Austin and seeing live music and being like, oh no, rolling their eyes. It's the opposite of that now because there's so much talent and so many great artists and great musicians making great music that people have a good experience that helps all of us. Mm -hmm. Even though it, it does make it more competitive and Absolutely, stuff, which is intimidating. Course. It can be intimidating when you go see, you have 30 friends who are fantastic musicians and songwriters like, man, but it's better for all of us. It's, you don't have to worry about your slice of the pie because the pie is bigger. When people go out and see a very talented artist, they now associate live music with that experience. Right. So next time they go, okay, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm uh, sorry, I'm letting you go. My point is, is that even with all that, sometimes I do feel like there's a lot of uh, people are kind of s saying very similar things there, got a very similar style. Uh, you know, I do piano bar for a living, man. I play all those songs mm. all the time. I want to do something outside the box. That's not exactly, I still want to be Texas. I still want to be, I was raised in East Texas. I mean, uh, grandpa had a beef ranch, you know, all this stuff. Like I've got that Texas stuff in my blood. I don't want to go completely alt, do something you know, weird. I want to do what's being done a little, a little different. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. With wash it all away, I try to back myself down off of that a little bit, and go, man, just write. I was, I was writing an Americana song, or maybe uh, that song is very influenced by like '90s country for me. You know what I hear in that song, John Denver. Well, I love John Denver. I, I was thinking more when I was writing it. Uh, I mentioned just now I was on the radio. That was a country radio station, so. You know, I listen to what did I who else to grow? Of course, Garth Brooks, George Strait, mm -hmm. Mark Chestnut, Clint yeah. Black. People like okay, that. Okay, Mark Chestnut, I could see in there. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of I was sound. I was feeling a little bit of that uh, Americana, what, what, what's now called Americana, but yeah. a little bit of a little bit of the '90s country feel. I, I loved it. I mean, I, I grew up on it. I really enjoyed same it. same. I love '90s country. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just the vocals kind of reminded me a little bit of John Denver. And, I am a fan of John Denver. And uh, but yeah, I you know how it is. Sometimes you've got people. You're a fan of, and people are like, "Is that an influence?" You're like, "I don't know. Maybe it is an influence." Yeah. You know, because there's certain people, like I was saying, Johnny Cash and the Beatles are a conscious influence. Right. I've tried to be like them, or even uh, when I was a kid, even the, the Seattle scene came out with Nirvana and yeah, Pearl Jam and everything. Yeah. Definitely, I've never lost that flavor. I mean, I, lo I Do love. You ever listen back to a song after you've written it or recorded it or whatever, and hear an influence you didn't know existed? I, I do, you and even like you just mentioned, John Vin Denver. I, I listened to John Denver. Was I thinking of John Denver when I wrote that? No, but there's so much subconscious thing, right brain stuff, yeah. you know, going on when you're writing a song. It's really, and I don't, maybe even, I don't want to know. I, don't, I think that's kind of cool that it's a mystery, you know. Right. I want it to be something that's, it's almost like magic. It's going to blow your mind afterwards, though. Like, wow, man, that that's in there. So, also, but partly because I do the piano bar thing, I will consciously take little pieces of other songs that are different styles maybe mm -hmm. like maybe a piece of a I've taken a piece of a Metallica song and put it in a totally like singer songwritery finger picking yeah. acoustic song but it's so out of context it doesn't say and it's just a tiny piece of it anyway right right but I did fit, I did it on purpose I, I said no I love that little melodic line I'm going to put it in this and I'll do that in Wash It All Away I did that with it and I'm, I don't want to tell people the parts, because then they'll, they'll only hear that when they hear my song. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I Frankenstein a couple things into that, like just put a little little <laughs> parts in. Yeah, man. But once, it, once it's all together, it. now it's it's new. You know, it's yeah. its own thing. It's not. We've all heard people who do who've written a pale imitation of a, another song. It's just it's just like that song. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. But you take a tiny little bit of this one, a little bit of this one, plus your own idea that you started with. I think that could be something really cool. That's know? pretty strategic. No, nothing's, nothing's in a vacuum, man. Everything ever. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember a couple of years ago, because I've, I've been a big fan of Chuck Berry. Someone was like, you know he ripped off the beginning of Johnny V. Good. And I'm like, no, he didn't. They played it for me. Like 15 years before, I got it. Yeah. Chuck Berry ripped that off. I was like, God, nobody is original ever. But yeah, uh, Miley Cyrus, See You Again, was ripped off from uh, I Wear My Sunglasses at Night. <laughs> I'm not, not familiar with that one, but that's yeah. crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. It's true. Um, you know, yeah. Again, you got to do little snippets. You can't rip off the whole no, no, thing no. at once. This, this is obvious. <laughs> yeah. This is obvious. Uh, but yeah, first time ever, Russell Boyd live in the ETX Rocks uh, living room. It's the the current single, "Wash It All Away," live and unplugged. Y'all check it out.
Well, my bag's packed now, it's a fact. Can't wait another day. Plain to see that things will not be the same. My truck and drive as I watch the sky go darker with pink clouds. I wonder what the hell will I do now? My eyes are dry, so I let the sky cry all my tears for me. I won't feel the pain, I let the rain wash it all away. No, I'm gone for good this time. And there is nothing for me if I stay I hope that someday When I wake up the sun will rise On what I need now, what I've left behind Daddy told me, boy, be strong Cause life is mostly pain I left the rain Wash it all away Well, maybe from here that's kind of where and I'll notice what to do. Maybe those stars will sing me songs of you. Cause nothing is free, go bent to be no guarantee of what I'll find. I'm so afraid I think I might go blind. This old truck has gathered dust around here for too long. Time is coming for me to let the rain wash it all away. I know I'm gone for good this time, and there is nothing for me if I stay. I hope that someday, when I wake up, the sun will rise on what I need, not what I've left behind. Oh, daddy told me, boy, be strong Cause life is mostly pain I left the rain Wash it all away Is this all a big mistake Or just my saving grace? How do so divide it? Wash it all away. I know I'm gone for good this time. And there is nothing for me if I stay. I hope that someday, when I wake up, the sun will rise. On what I need, not what I've left behind. Oh, daddy told me, boy, be strong. Life is mostly pain, love the rain, wash it all away. All right, so we are back again. It's episode number 318. We're sitting here chatting with Russell Boyd all the way from Round Rock, Texas, by way of Houston and Palestine and Nacogdoches. And it's really pretty much 79 the whole way. Like, yeah, so he's not allowed to live anywhere this but This is right 79. off of Highway 79. <laughs> so, 79. <laughs> That's all I've done. I've just traveled the link to 79 There's, today. So, yeah. so you have to have an album that has the, the 79 Dude, in that's it a good somewhere. idea, and I will yeah. give you credit when I do that. Yeah, you I have know. to do that. So in the future, when we see Russell Boyd all along 79, you know where that came from, <laughs> or whatever he comes right. up with. <laughs> that's a good idea, <laughs> no, we, man. We just want a fifth. Uh, nothing more. You know what I mean? Just your 20%. Uh, vodka will be sure. fine. A fifth of vodka. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Russell's in the in the living room for the first time. Hopefully, it won't be the last. And I just really want to pick your brain about music because music is always always comes from somewhere. Um, sometimes it's family. Sometimes it's just something that impacted you um, in a positive way somewhere. So, where did music first enter the the scene for you? Uh, I think I was. I've talked to several people today. I, th I think it was you that I was telling that, yeah, it was. My parents got me a, a record player yes. when I was four. Mm -hmm. And they had a big record, a vinyl record collection. 
Elvis, the Beach Boys, Eagles, Johnny Cash, the Beatles, uh, Ray Charles, Wow, Temptations, uh, and there was some stuff. It's weird. Like I didn't. I remember listening to the Rolling Stones, and I wasn't feeling it. The animals scared the crap out of me <laughs> when I was like four years old. I was like, no, no. Uh, my mom even would play like Gershwin, Rhapsody in Blue. She still loves that song. Nice. Uh, she played a little bit of piano at church and things when she was younger. But uh, I think this is kind of interesting. My brother's uh, more of a school musician than I am. He, you know, took lessons, learned. He, I, I can't read music. I play piano. I have to hear it. Mm. But uh, he actually went to school, majored in music. But uh, my parents were never really serious musicians. But, uh, we found My dad was adopted. And thanks to Ancestry.com, he recently found out his real parents. They had just died the year before. It was kind of heartbreaking. It just barely oh, missed man. them. But his dad was like a, a piano player in his hometown. That is crazy. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Yeah, because people were always like, you know, most most musicians are in families, like a little tribe of musicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, for whatever reason, my dad just wasn't, uh, he loves music, but he just never felt moved to, to play. But I thought it was kind of cool. My, you know, my biological grandfather that I never knew existed was a... That's amazing. So that, um, that must have been, it's in the DNA somewhere, man. So we've been talking off camera a little bit with Russell, and plus, you know, we live stream the, the song portion of this over on my Twitch, but... Um, your day job is, I mean, you're a piano man, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Right, so he's a two, like a multifaceted entertainer. You're two different artists, really. Yeah. Um, your day job, you're playing piano at a bar. And day job, yeah. Your that's day right. job. That's what I call it, yeah. And then you're, I don't know if it's hobby or whatever, but you're also this songwriter that's so writing amazing Americana. What's even, what's even more fun than that? Uh, so I've always been like a little kid. Like some people like to just focus on one thing, mm -hmm. what they like. I'm not. I'm like, ooh, what is this? I want to try this. I bet I can be good at it. You know that kind of thing. And I've got a friend uh, who's also my producer, Danny Smith, who is just like I am. Uh, I guess it's been about three or four years ago. We both kind of could play drums. We we're like, dude, we're gonna do this. We're one of us is on I drums. Think all of us can kind of play. Drums. play it. Right. <laughs> but, but we put our time into it. We set up our kits in our house, and we had a rivalry. One of us would get better at something. So we became pretty good drummers. So now at uh, Especially if it's a like a higher paying gig where we can pay two piano players more expensive than not. But uh, yeah. like last night where we played, he starts on drums, I start on piano, and at some point we can switch You'll places. Switch. So a that's just fun. Yeah. Just to, to play Close something different. Minds. But it, yeah, it's visually it looks yeah. cool. But also, how many? I mean, we know a lot of the same songs, but he knows a hundred songs I don't know, and I know a hundred songs he doesn't know. So now there's it's really hard to stop us, man. When you got two right. people who can do that, that's awesome. Harmonies in every song. Do you find that the different sides of you, because that's two different sides of Russell Boyd. Do they, do they bleed into the each other? Yeah. Uh, so piano bar's real personality driven. Right. Right. Uh, I always say I'm, I'm becoming my, my grandfather, my, my mom's dad, the older I get. I was actually pretty shy as a kid, and I just become, he was a real friendly, extroverted guy, and I become more like him every year. Mm -hmm. Piano bar is basically getting up in front of a couple hundred people and making friends with them. I mean, it's real, mm -hmm. it's not a concert, and never, it's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be, uh, you it's know, artistic. To be, it's supposed to be low key. It's, it's not low key. It's supposed to be rowdy, drunken, hey, whoa, whoa, oh, okay. so, you know, I mean, you. like shots I and. So uh, piano this, bar, not restaurant bar. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm gotcha. not, I, dude, right. I can't do that. I can't yeah. do the background music thing. But no, yeah, sing along and request and you know, friends in the places and journey and uh, ride girl and that okay, kind of stuff. Okay. So when you're doing that and you're making jokes, you're making fun of people the whole time. I mean, that comes extremely naturally to me. Like I was saying earlier, I can't imagine how I stumbled into it. I always say I stumbled into the only job I ever wouldn't get fired from. You probably feel the same way. But you know what I mean? I mean, it's just I'm like. People are paying me. They're buying me drinks, and I just play just to play random songs and be myself and say whatever stupid shit pops in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know? awesome. So how do you turn that off when you're writing a song for? Uh, Bob, I, mean, I don't. It comes it comes through a little bit. I mean, okay. I got my little quirky. Even End of the World's got a little bit of quirkiness mm -hmm. in it. You know, it's got some odd. Do you stuff. play some of your originals at the piano bar? I do. I, I, what I try to do, yeah, not every time, but most times. Uh, Depends on the show. Every room has a different vibe. But also, like last night, we started with Wash It All Away. Nice. Just kind of mention it. I usually get a few Spotify followers from it. And, I mean, usually if people, because I have weekly or monthly gigs, people will request a song. I mean, Cool. It's pretty cool, cool to get paid to play your own song, man. Yeah. I mean, you're on the radio. Uh, I mean, you've been on the radio for a while. You've had singles. For yeah. You know, the college students aren't doing that as much. Yeah. Uh, they did add me Bastards. at the, uh, <laughs> well, it's, but that's what's kind of cool about now. 
there's not just the, you know whatever it was 20 years ago or something you had one avenue yeah you had the, the record companies record were the labels. gateway yep and they were evil money machines right. and you had to work with the evil money machines to go or you never get hurt or you never get hurt mm-hmm. now there's a million different ways to do it mm-hmm. i can sit here and talk to you i've got a few nice people from chicago and georgia they're going to hear that wouldn't ever know who I was. They right. may not hear me. I don't think they're, they're not playing me in Chicago and Georgia. You know? uh, they I've are got now, Dylan's, That's right. <laughs> Dylan's helped me in Texas with the radio because a significant number of people still listen to it. But the college students, they like who their friends listen to, mm-hmm. which is, that's what's cool about, you know, spot this streaming stuff. What is cool about it is extremely shareable. Hey, listen, whatever. Okay, cool. I'll check it out. Mm-hmm. Now they're a fan. Yeah. That's all it takes. I mean, they all they have to do is type in my name or even list their friend's playlist or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about the 21st century with music is all you got to do is make it shareable. You have to you have to have shareable content all the time. And if you don't, if people aren't clicking the share button, then you know people complain a lot about uh, the way the music industry has changed because you don't make a lot of money from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I think it's like 226 streams to get a dollar, mm-hmm. something like that. It's not a lot, but you're getting something for that. That you're paying for a, you're you're you. I'm being. I've got five listeners in the UK or whatever. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Am I huge in the UK? I'm about to tour it. No, but I've got some people that I wouldn't hear. Also, in you know 1976, you could see Aerosmith for five dollars. Aerosmith was rich as they could be because their record company was paying them because they were making all their money in record sales. Mm-hmm. Now you make your money from the show. Now it costs $200 to see your Everything's Aerosmith. Everything's backwards now. Everything's right? backwards. Mm-hmm. You still make the money. People still want music. They still love it. I mean, I just kind of disagree with trying to resist the tide sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's certain things are inevitable, but people still love what they love. Mm-hmm. People don't love music any less now than they did when Aerosmith was out in 1976, right. you know? They love it just as much, but there's just, we have to do things now. Can, you, can I record an album and sit back and collect the checks? Probably not. But I don't want to anyway. There are people who want to do that. Mm-hmm. They don't want to play the shows. I live for shows. I would. How much are you as an artist when you're writing? How much are you thinking about this kind of stuff? Because you seem like a really intelligent guy. You're really strategic in uh, your approach on You know, it's funny stuff. you ask that. Uh, I'm talking like I am, but I'm really... Uh, it's not this something you talk, think about often. So here's what I've gotten... I, I mentioned I wrote novels for a while. And I think this. I'm so glad I did because this is what I got good at. When you're being creative, you have to let your right brain, the creative part, dump out whatever it's got to say. And you, your conscious part, you just got to go, well, no, I'm not looking. Do, yeah, buddy, you do you, man. Do whatever. And then go back and kind of fix it. And you need to have a group of people. Uh, here's what I wasn't good at when I was 20 that I'm good at now. If I wrote a song when I was 20, I was either one of two, uh, two ends of the spectrum. I would either be like, no, mine, no, don't give me advice. I will not change it. It's perfect. Or I would want to take every single piece of advice that everybody gave me until it wasn't even me anymore. Oh, you think it should be short? Okay, yes, I'll cut that. Oh, you think it's change? Okay, I'll, I'll change that. I, I, I couldn't do any in between. Now I've got I've got a group of people I send songs to. I just record it on my phone, voice them. I send it to my wife, uh, my producer, my guitar player, my brother. They all have different uh, ears. Ear, so yes, so some of them say my guitar player and my wife really know Texas country music very well. Okay. So they know what's being done. They can compare it to Co Wetzel or whoever and go, hey, this is kind of cool. Kind of, they're, this is being done right now. Uh, my brother's not really into that scene, but he's really good with music in mm-hmm. general. Songwriting in general. He's really good at analyzing he's things. School time well, he was also, right? He's school time. He was also my editor when I was writing. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, my producer hears things, where this song could go. He's also a very creative person. He's really good at just songwriting. I mean, it's... And I'm able to take all what they say. And sometimes I go, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I don't think you're getting my vision. And I'm able to, not in an insecure way, I can go, no, you're not getting it this time. But usually I know that they know what they're talking about. And that if they're saying, if they all say the same thing, then I need to, it needs to change, you know? Where in the process are you getting that criticism? Uh, so, you know, writing a song could take anywhere from an hour to a year. You're right. Uh, and what I'm, I mean by process is like, <laughs> you know, you're here, you're writing the song. I usually now you're go close ahead and to pre-production. It. Now you're producing it. Now you know. I, I I'm I do it pretty far out. I write I write uh, I've written four or five songs for the next album. We're not done with this one. I mean I do it pretty. So I, we've got time to tweak it. I've got time right, to play right, a little right. bit, feel it, go. Man, that line's not working for me anymore. It was. So, uh, but I'll go ahead and write. I'll have the whole melody and song and uh, and lyrics and basic structure down. And then I'll just, once I feel comfortable recording it, I'm still reading it off my notes. Right. 
So then, I'll, then I'll send it the to them. And if sometimes I'm like, I love this melody and I really don't want to change it, but I'm not so sure about this verse or I'm trying to say this, I'm not sure that's the best way. And different ones of them are better at different things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, my wife is not, well, I was about to say she's not a musician. She's actually was a prodigy of a trumpet player. But she doesn't really play anymore now. But she's still, she's really good at just hearing things as a consumer. Okay. Uh, this is what as people, a fan. As a fan, this yeah. is what people, which is tough. That's tough to do, man, when you're right. so close to it. And those other guys are... Uh, well, not really only tough. that, but you have to be able to trust who you're hearing this stuff from. Oh, well, sure. Because, I mean, any fan can be like, yo, Russell, that's, that stuff that's is... Absolutely, that's why you got to have that's a... incredible. A, a, which I don't think you should do it alone. Yeah. I mean, I, when I, like I said, when I was 20, I either took everybody's advice or was like, no, no one touch it. It's my baby. So the art has gotten better since you've... Oh, I think so. I think that's... A, part of the artistic process. You've got yeah. to learn how to take, because you, you are going to need to change things that you make. Right. But you can't change it so much. It, you probably do have a cool idea of where you're going to go with it, and you need people who will help you get there. So you basically feel the older you've gotten, the more malleable you have become when it comes to oh, yeah. being I mean, able yeah. to change something that possibly before when you were younger, you were so rock steady on that. Like, hey, I wrote this. But it, well, honestly, it's probably just, it just was insecurity. I mean, I just wasn't yeah, secure. Yeah, that's where I was headed. Yeah. I was either, uh, I wasn't secure enough in it either to change it or I was too insecure to not take, not do what everybody wanted me to do. Right. I mean, I, I didn't have any commercial success with any of those things either. Right. And I think that, I mean, that, that's just part of being a, honestly, a lot of, not just a creative person, not just an artist, but any, a person who makes something you got to learn to take that. Uh, you, you need a close, uh, like a council, you know. So awesome. Guys, this is why I love this freaking show, man. Uh, every freaking week we're so lucky and blessed to have different songwriters in here. Everybody is so different. You know, we've talked with songwriters that, I mean, some of the most legendary songwriters on the planet. You know, like Vince Gill and, and Bill Anderson, folks like that have been on the show. We talked to people that have five followers on Facebook, but all of them have the same process but it's a little bit different little bit for different, everybody yeah. you know um some people are just pulling it out of air midair like being a conduit they don't know where it's coming from but that's the way i start always so i'm saying really just let it that's what i was saying when i dump dump my bright brain out just let it go i'll have a concept or like a like images in my head of the song where sometimes i feel like it's like i can hear it from the other room but i can't tell what everything's See, doing when i know? hear this kind of stuff from a songwriter i always <laughs> want to know the first time this is happening to you I don't know if you're four, I don't know if you're 12, I don't know if you're 25. The first time that happens to you, what is going through your mind? That's going to freak you out a little bit. Uh, do you know a songwriter named Drew Kennedy? I and, do. Okay. I really, love Drew Really Kennedy. cool dude. Yeah. Uh, I was at the Texas Music Pickers uh, seminar. I had not met him. I had some friends who knew him, but and he got to be one of the speakers. There was like a panel talking about writing songs. And he put it this way, and I was like, yes, it's like an addictive drug. You make something that's not been made before, and it just fills you with this euphoria. I've actually written a song about the whole artistic process, the ups and downs, called "When the Flood Comes." I don't know if you listen to that one. It's it's not country. It's like a I'm not blues sure if rap. That's one of the ones I hit up. It's like blues rap kind of thing. I'm but check it, it out though. It sort of hits on this, but he said it better. He said it's such an intoxicating feeling. You want that again, just like like a, like you hit the crack pipe. I mean, it's just so you can't wait to do it again. I mean. It's wow. magical. And even if your first song is not going to be good, dude, it's nobody's right. is. No, never. I mean, I, I think I wrote my first song at like 14 or 15, probably. It wasn't good. Mm. It was dumb. But, I mean, it's still, it was, it was never been written. It was a start. And that's, mm. that's how, that's how you got to start doing that stuff. And it still was like, whoa. It wasn't a song I'd ever heard before, you know, even if mm -hmm. it wasn't good. It was new. And mm -hmm. it was just out of thin air. It didn't, this did not exist in the world five minutes ago, and now it does. Yeah. yeah that's such a... It's, an, it's, it's like doing a drug, man. It's just it's incredible. Crazy. It's got to be an incredible feeling. Um, Except for then you get the self-doubt. you got the other side of that coin as an artist. Yeah, well, yeah. There, there's Now it's out there. And now do I share it with people? Do I risk myself sure. with other folks? Like, And that's, that and that's why songwriters doing. are typically some of the most insecure people on the planet. When, when that's another thing that. I got really used to when I was writing novels. Uh, nobody, nobody, nobody just writes a novel and puts it out. You have to have an editor. Mm -hmm. I had two editors. One that I hired online and my brother. So I got used to writing this stuff. It's terrifying the first time you do it. After the thousandth time you do it, it's no longer terrifying. And they'll still say things that irritate you. My producer said that, he's like, you're going to have to change that tagline or that chorus. And I'm like, I literally wrote the entire song based on that line. Wow. You know, but it's not as devastating as it was the first time I have to hear that feedback. Yeah. It's scary to, to show things that you made to other people, man. Yeah. Because you're so invested in it. It's like they're criticizing you as a person. 
you know, in, in ways stuff. that you normally don't get criticized at all. Man, know? we're sitting here with Russell Boyd. We're getting behind the music with Russell. Just <laughs> how, how he's how he does what he does, man, and it's so cool to be able to talk to singer songwriters on on a semi regular basis because everybody does it different. But we hear the same stories from everybody, from the famous to the unknown, and it's just amazing. Um, and I know it's probably the same for other artistic branches as well, from painting and sculpting and writing novels. And, you know, we, we see a lot of different bleeding effects between different avenues of artistic approach, whether it's songwriting, whether it's writing books, whether it's painting. Um, but you're right, it's all right brain stuff. And yeah, to, to hear you put it in such a almost barbaric fashion of just wrong. dumping out my right That's brain. That's right, man. I mean, you just got to let it go. You yeah. Can't. Don't tell Walk it to shut away up. Let from it do. It. Yeah. yeah, let it do what it's gonna do. But you you say let it go, but there's gonna be a way where you dump it all out and then you kind of then pick you go back. the wheat from the shaft. That's correct. And, yeah, that's exactly what you have to do. Yeah. So how do you do that? What's your approach to that? Uh, so well, so I mean, me personally, I don't ever just start singing a song and not know what it's about. Uh -huh. I'll have I'll 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 be like, and then maybe I'll hear a song from another artist and I'm like. I want to write a song. They, they mentioned something in that song. I want to write a song that mentions that or a, a style or a way that makes me feel. And I'm like, I've never written a song like this. I want to try that. So Could it also be just like a, a conversation you over here walking by? Sure. Yeah. Oh, man. Some of my best melodies have or, or song lines have been misheard. So I'll have the radio turned down or whatever. I'm like, what was that? No, that's not what they said at all. But I'm going to say it now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's something different. But yeah, man. But you were talking about going back in and, and, and weeding out the, the bad stuff. I'll th I'll have an idea of what I want to say, and I'll just do it. Very often, I'll drive along because I drive all the time. I'm a musician, mm -hmm. and I'll just have my uh, my notes up, and I'll just make. I'll write eight verses to a song, maybe just throw out stuff or little one lines that are or maybe seem kind of witty or says what I want to say, and then I go back and go, well, that's stupid. I could combine these two lines and make it into one. You know that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like nice. a brainstorming session. You know, you don't. No criticism, just let it all out there, and then I can look later, maybe a couple of days later, you have a little more perspective, and you can go, that's really cool. That was not cool at all. I'm deleting that. You know? Yeah. How many times does that happen after a long night of people buying you drinks at the piano Oh, bar? man, I, I don't... That's not what I... <laughs> you know what? My, my drug of choice for being creative? Caffeine. Okay. That's the best, yeah. All right, very cool. Give me a monster energy drink or a cup of coffee. Uh, that's the best time. Just speed up the brain process. I may ponder things after smoking a little or drinking some, but I don't ever. I don't actively sit down and try to write a song. Yeah. Intoxicated. That's just not. I'm not Hemingway. Right yeah. Now. Well, what what did he know. say? Uh, write drunk, edit sober. But well, I've uh, heard some people say they've written some songs when they were pretty gone. I, I thought of some. And woke up the next day and, and saw it on their phone that's or whatever. Not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but sometimes they'll be like, yo. I very much. I mean, I think most creative people probably do this. You never put it down. Yeah. I'll, I'll actively. I do get more done when I pick up my guitar and with my notepad or my. I used to do my notes on my phone and really I'm doing it. But there's so much pressure there somehow that I don't do it for more than ten or fifteen minutes at a time, and yeah. then it's bouncing around in my head for the next two days, and then I sit down and do it, and now that bouncing around has given me something else right. to do in that fifteen when minutes. You, when you're done and you put the guitar up, you put the phone away. Is there a crash? Afterwards, <laughs> no, it's like a gong sound. Like this. no, no. What I mean, like just <laughs> like you, an emotional you, you crash. Come down, yeah. No, uh, no. It just uh, it's like I'm going through and I'm going through my day, and I get the kids off to school, and I do the dishes, and I sit down with the guitar for 15 minutes, and then I put it down, and it's still there if I need it. But now I'm going to go do this, and maybe I'll, I'll play video games or something while thinking about that melody in my head or what I want to say. Incredible. You know Incredible. what I mean, dude? You you. Your subconscious mind never stops doing that stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's still working for it's you. It's amazing stuff, guys. Um, so we're here with Russell. He's going to play us another song. I think the second song we're doing is Asking You to Ask Me. That's good. And we're going to use uh, Into the World as the... As the sneak peek. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Sounds good. So tell us a little bit about Asking You to Ask Me, because this is not PC for radio. No, yeah. It's got <laughs> it's got the curse. So I've never really written curse words in my songs. And I curse all the time. So I was like, I need to do that. Yeah. I'm going to be true to myself, you know? It's funny you say that because when we decided that I was going to be able to stream video games, we, we've always tried to keep the podcast family friendly, right? From episode one to like 270, I would say. And so the first question my fiance asked me when I decided I wanted to stream video games, she was like, all right, are you going to keep this family friendly? Because I've seen you play video games before. <laughs> and I don't know how you're going to not. There's no way to do this without cussing. Because yeah. you're, you're, you cuss a lot, honey. You <laughs> yeah. cuss a lot. Especially when you're playing video games and watching sports. Right. 
And I was like, that's a great question. I'm going to have to be me on, on video games. or cause Gotta let that pass One out, thing buddy. we talked about earlier is if you're not who you are, they pick you out mm-hmm. quickly. You can't pretend forever. Sure. You know, people will know when you're being fake. So that was a conscious decision that I had I, to make. I made a conscious decision to put cursing in this song. I was like, I'm just going to do it, man. So ask you to ask me, uh, it's been a... It's been quite a year, um, <laughs> so which is great for inspiration of, of song, uh, of songwriting. But yeah, so this is as I was saying before, uh, asking you to ask me. That's kind of like a little funny. It's very country line. Mm. And that actually popped in my head before I wrote the song. The wordplay. The wordplay. A kind of. Uh, I'm asking you to ask me to come. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, and it's just about. Uh, I was kind of seeing the future here a little bit. Maybe in ways that I was hoping that I wouldn't, but it ended up being. But, uh, you know, you've already left and got, they deserve to be left, but now I want to come back home anyway. You're, you're, you're not always the best thing, but it's what, I, it's what I have to have anyway. It's what you know. It's what I know. Mm. And, uh, or even more than that, it's what I don't even want to know. It's not what I, it's not what I want, it's what I need, you know, mm, uh-huh. which now I'm experiencing in real life. But uh, I'm experiencing this song in real life, not in real life, not Chris. But, uh, and I also try to make it... Uh, you know, I said it was like Merle Haggard. I guess it's a little bit of, and I did not do this on purpose. I didn't think about my influences in this. I was just trying to write kind of a country song. It sounds like Merle Haggard with uh, Janis Joplin to me now. Nice. That little, alone. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of Janis Joplin-y to me. And I didn't actually notice that until my producer pointed it out. It's a cool song, man. I love the, When I was listening to it on YouTube, I was just like, man, every time I hear a different song from you, I always think it's a different artist. That's why. I, dude, and this is me. Condensed. I mean, I used to have. I used to be all over the place. I mean, my musical you used influences. to be all over the place. And now, oh, this is yeah. This is me way way oh, leaned in, okay. trying to be. This is me trying to be more uh, focused. So this on is my the Texas difference music. between un, Dude, I used to write unmedicated like, bipolar, and now you're. Un- <laughs> <laughs> so I used to. I would write literally a rap song, a metal song, a folk song. I mean, and that's what I listened to, man. Wow. When I was a teenager, I literally listened to Snoop Dogg and Pantera and and. Uh, Gordon Lightfoot or something wow. like Jim Croce. I mean, Crazy. I was, those are my favorites. I mean, Crazy. I, I, but we're excited to show the song for the first time ever on the show. It's Asking You to Ask Me from Russell Boyd, live and unplugged on the ETX Rock Show. Y'all check it out. Well, I signed my lease today. For the next half a year, I've got somewhere to stay. Been two weeks since I said goodbye Two loves of my life since I first swore I'd never do this shit again Oh, there's two sides to every break Girl, I know I made mistakes My sides late night calls a second chance And songs of tenderness Your side's just a steaming pile of shit Hey, I could fill this empty bed with some girl from afar Who knows every word to all my song and she thinks that I'm a star You could never hurt me if I just decide to spend my life alone Instead I'm asking you, ask me please to come back home Oh, this love's a tricky thing Some say it's a losing game Either you stay with me long enough till you begin to hate you think of me as just a past mistake There's two sides to every fight You know me work on every night Girl, you had your sweet and loving ways Then you had your span of days When I did not know where the fuck you were Hey, I could fill this empty bed With some girl from afar Who knows every word to all my songs And she thinks that I'm a star You can never hurt me if I just decide to spend my life alone Instead I'm asking you 
ask me please come back home Tell the truth girl I'm not saying you could change Wrong hurt I need your heart and your sweet face to stay the same I can't forgive you for the past But you gotta look me in the eye and ask Hey, or I could tell this empty bed with some girl from afar Who knows every word to all my song and she thinks that I'm a star You could never hurt me if I just decide to spend my life alone Instead I'm asking you, ask me please to come back home Instead, I'm asking you, ask me please to come back home. Guys, that was Asking You to Ask Me by Russell Boyd, the one and only Russell Boyd here on the ETX Rock Show for the first time ever. Super cool guy. We are also going to put End of the World, which is a sneak peek song that played out on our Facebook, I think a little over a week ago. We'll put that at the end of the episode uh, if you guys want to check that out as well. Uh, that was my favorite Russell Boyd song. I'm stoked that he played it. I think you guys will like it. I think you attributed that to Johnny Cash and the Beatles, right? Yeah, that's right. I was trying to be Johnny Cash in the verses and uh, the Beatles in the chorus. And somebody asked me, why would you write about the end of the world? The only thing I can think of is that I, when I wrote that, that was right when the hurricanes hit the south coast. Okay. I didn't consciously go, hey, that's like the world's ending. We write a song about it, but I, that's got to be why. I mean, because it was, uh, it was like Every a time I hear songs man. about the end of the world, um, there was a song called The End of the World, I think it was Skeeter Davis. We're talking a long time ago. And you can look this up, I'm pretty sure it's true. <laughs> it's on the internet, so it must be. No, it's gotta be. Um, but The End of the World is the name of the song, and that was the number one song at the time. And then the second song, the number two song, was called Our Day Will Come. <laughs> By Ruby and the Romantics. Like, somehow those two songs were one and two at the same time. Like the, op the opposites? Yeah, the yeah opposites. I always thought that was funny. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome jam. It, it honestly reminds me of a buddy of ours, T.J. Broskoff, that kind of dark nature of the song. Yeah. And I love the ride and die aspect of it. You know, like if, if the world's ending, I'm okay with that because at least it's ending and I'm, I've got you here with me. Uh, I can't I think I mentioned this earlier. I can't remember if we were rolling, but uh, I got the animated video coming out, man. I'm really looking forward to it. You better tag there's us a, in that. There's a cartoon me. That's in it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's pretty cool. cool. They cool. made it all apocalyptic and stuff. Pretty and stoked. Yeah. yeah, make sure you tag us in that. I don't sure. want to miss that at all. Sure. Um, but it's Russell Boyd, and if people are hearing about you for the first time, where can they follow along with everything you have going on? Sure. So uh, I've got my website, and not a lot of people just go visit websites. I think everybody just visits the same four websites over and over. But if you change your mind, it's... Same uh, four. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, russellboyd.com is where all my stuff is. Uh and then I've got Russell Boyd TX for my Facebook and Twitter. My Twitter gets unsuspended. Russell Boyd Music for uh, Instagram. And then I'll... Stop uh, killing people on Twitter. It's, oh, God, I, suspended. death threats. <laughs> Who knew you can't make a death... It was a choking death threat. But, uh, <laughs> and you know, it just searched my name. Uh, Russell. I always have to say, Russell has two S's, two L's. Nobody yeah. spells it right. B-O-Y-D. I've never seen five anybody five. named Russell with one L. Me so. either, but everybody spells it that way. I don't know yeah, why. I don't know. It's weird. People are lazy. <laughs> two S's, two L's. That's right. We will um, link that in the description below to make it easier for folks so they sure. don't have to try to spell it if they don't want to. Thank you. Just click the link in the description below. It's russellboyd.com. Russell Boyd TX on Twitter and Facebook. You might have to wait a week until he can respond on Twitter. <laughs> um, somebody has to bail him out. That's right. Twitter jail. <laughs> and it's just Russell Boyd Music on Instagram. So make sure you're following or liking him everywhere along those lines. Um, the current single is Wash It All Away. You heard it earlier in the episode. Make sure you're requesting that from your local radio station. No matter where you live, even if you live in um, Manila. Yeah, that's true. It's actually distributed this time. So, End of the World was not. CD Tech said it was too dark. Yeah, well, but they, this one is. Don't so. listen to music in Manila. It's good shirt, man. Manila people. <laughs> well, wait, would they be called Manilians or Manila? I don't know. I don't know. Guys, comment down below what they call people from Manila. <laughs> Somebody will be a smart ass and say Filipinos. You watch. Because <laughs> that would be true. That would be true. Uh, 
See, I'm like, I'm a Bostonian, but I'm also an American. So I want to know, people in Manila, what are they? They're Filipino, I get that. But there's, like, there's got to be a different... I don't know, man. You know what I mean? What is it, like, round, round rockians? So I think we're round rockians, yeah. Yeah. That's weird. But make sure you follow on the artist. Request the music. That's really important. I have to say that, or Dylan Steen will kick my ass. Um, so it's wash it all away. Make sure you're requesting it. Even at internet radio. Internet radio it matters as well. Stream the music. I know, I'm pretty sure it's on Spotify. Yeah, that's right. on there. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Spotify followers important to you as well? Yes. Uh, what's cool about, I didn't really, I, at first I was like, what's the point, man, when somebody follows mm -hmm. you? But what it does is... Uh, Monthly listeners, right? It doesn't necessarily, people could follow you without listening to you. Okay. But it makes it more likely that they will, if they even forget about you, you'll come up on their daily mix. Okay. You'll come up on their release radar, and everybody doesn't do that. You'll come up on their suggestions, and uh, it'll come up on their, when they're, uh, you know, if there's something, what is it that you're, who your friends also follow, I think, so if their friends look at who they follow, right. it's visible. There's certain ways it can help you. So do that. It makes it much more likely that they'll, because, you know, I do piano bar. It's, like I said, personality driven. Yeah. People will follow me just because they like me personally, but they don't even, Everything to listen to my listening. music, but right. at some point it pops up on their right. on their mix. That so do that. Mix Follow on Spotify. Yeah. Super important. And uh, guys, I want to thank everybody for spending some time here with us again on the ETX Rock Show. We are located on all social media at ETX Rocks. If you're watching on the YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That is the best way you can support us and our venture. No matter where you're listening, hit the follow or subscribe button. I know each podcast uh, app is different. Uh, but subscribe so you can know when we have new content. We have new content every single week. If you're a music fan, that should be important to you because this is all about musicians. It's about songwriters, about artistic. Have you ever seen those signs where someone just misses a letter and it's funny? <laughs> I love those. That's what the internet was made for originally. Was just a for show funny of, things. Yeah, exactly. Distract you from why do we have the serious funny setup? cat videos? Yeah. Nobody was arguing about politics or whatever over the. Funny yeah, 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 and then they stopped, and now it's just, it's a serious place to be where you end up in jail now. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's it's get back to the man. days when we were just being funny on the internet. But yeah, we thank you for, for doing that. We also have a webpage, it's etxrocks.show, etxrocks.show, not .com. We'll put that in the description down below as well. So make sure you're checking that out. Um, over 10,000 hours of content on there. We've been busy, so if you're a music fan... Check it out. And as we've said on the show for 318 episodes now, we want to thank you guys out there for always supporting live music of all genres and all styles. And don't ever forget, ETX rocks. That's right.
Now bring me every bottle in this house and call up my life friend. And if anybody else shows up, just let them in. And while it's raining fire, I'll hold you close, sing you out to sleep. Kiss you while the earth quakes open underneath our feet. The world is ending now, but I'm not sad because I've got you sitting next to me when it does. Yeah, I picked that gun up and I put it down to stay. So bring me every bottle in this house and cut up all our friends. If anybody else shows up, just let them in. And while it's raining fire, I'll hold you close and sing you out to sleep. Kiss you while the earthquakes open underneath our feet. The world is ending now, but I'm not sad because. I've got you sitting next to me when it does. From the unknown to the stars, from the couch to the car, from the unheralded and the unheard, to the legends and beyond, it's where we all belong. Yes, this is where it all starts. From every genre, from every plane, this is where the Won't you bring a friend? This is where it all begins. Welcome to the show. Let the music flow of every style and creed. And you can bet your socks that ETX rocks. ETX rocks.